So as part of the LGBT community here in the Philippines, which is a country that is very religious and traditional, uh, we do not have any queer role models. We didn't have, uh, growing up, we didn't have any queer role models nor resources about the LGBT community. Uh, with that, it added confusion on our end, especially uh, we, did, we didn't see any uh, same-sex relationships back then that it's normalized. It's not yet normalized at that time. And personally, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder. And I could say that uh, majority of my struggles were part of my confusion as a queer individual back then. And uh, with that, we created a community, a support group for the LGBT community here in the Philippines in order for them to feel empowered in terms of their sexuality. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think Rowan and I are on the same page uh, about this. Uh, yeah, we grew up in a country that has very limited to, I would say, none uh, LGBTQIA plus representation. So uh, when we look at the movies or at the, at the films, whatever's being shown, it's always heterosexual couples. So it uh, had an impact on our struggles with our sexuality. Uh, I remember personally, when I was growing up, I used to think that, am I not normal? Because I don't see anyone that's like me up there, right? In mainstream media or even in social media. And, and so that's why we came up with the idea of uh, creating this group for people like us. Because uh, we know how important it is for, for young queers to um, uh, see representation because it helps validate their feelings. It helps, um, it helps um, for them to feel normal and for them to... Uh, see people that are like them you know it, it creates a safe space for them so it started with a youtube channel mm-hmm. uh, so we started as content creators and then um after creating the youtube channel we created the facebook group because uh, uh we see how important as a platform facebook is mm-hmm. in creating meaningful connections uh we created the facebook group last tw- november 2019 and you could say that when we move the community on Facebook, it really solidifies the connection, the friendship, and relationship with yeah. the community within the community. Yeah, and it was actually amazing how it grew from yes. then on. We just created the Facebook group, and a lot of people started joining. Mm-hmm. It and it was uh pretty much self organizing. Yes, like the they broke down into smaller groups. There were uh smaller groups from uh based on. Visayas and Mindanao, these are islands in the Philippines. So they created their smaller group. So they would name it like a, a family routine. That was the name of the group before. Now it's Queer Safe Spaces. So family routine, Bisdak or family routine, um, Pampanga. Yes. It Usually it um, it's group uh, b- based on where they are located in the country. So it's pretty much self-organizing from then. And it's really amazing how uh, big the group is now today. Yes. Actually, uh, we have more than 40 group chats. Mm-hmm. Uh, the group chats are based on geographic location, interest, uh, what else? Profession. Profession. So it's really a support group for all sorts of things. Yeah, if you're, for example, if you're a queer who is taking up law, there's a group chat for that. If you're a queer person who is a, uh, in the engineering sector, there's a group chat for that. It's it's amazing how these um, smaller groups came to be with uh, inside the bigger Facebook groups. Uh, actually, created our YouTube channel mainly for representation, queer representation. Uh, we want to educate the people here in the Philippines that our relationship is valid, and uh, it's called our ship name. It's called Routine, Roan, and Tina, Routine. So it's a wordplay that describes the daily routine of a, a lesbian of a lesbian couple. So we want to showcase our daily life and so that we could uh, really empower a lot of lesbian lesbian couples out there that our love is valid yeah we we want to normalize it as much as possible and to your question if we uh created the youtube channel with the uh 
with the intention of creating a Facebook group. Actually, it's more incidental, I suppose, because when we created the YouTube channel, we got a lot of messages from supporters, a lot of uh, comments on their videos, and um, we thought about it. What if we created a Facebook group so that we can have like an avenue for all these uh, for all these questions, these queries? Because a lot of those questions, we uh, we don't have like the monopoly to the answers to these questions. We know there's a lot of queer couples out there. Uh, they're just closeted or they're not out. And um, we think a lot of them would be able to help the younger queers. So that's a it's actually pretty much incidental. And it's we we're really happy with the outcome. Yeah. Oh, so it's a it's a program that really uh accelerates communities within Facebook. So actually we applied to the program accidentally. <laughs> we didn't know it back then what what the program was. So we really want to uh upscale our initiatives since uh, as Tina mentioned it was very self-sustaining mm -hmm. and more on suggestions from the community members. So uh, it was our plan to really have a nonprofit organization for the LGBT community, but we didn't realize that well, we could achieve that uh, last year. So uh, I, we applied last year and we wanted to promote gender equality queer mental health, and socioeconomic empowerment for queer people. So we really uh, want to take up space in order for us to really, uh, uh, what do you call this? To really solidify, solidify our focuses. Yes. So through the help of Facebook Accelerator Program, uh, we, uh, we actually made the first step in promoting our cause. So through funding, coaching, and training, we really uh, created the pilot test for our for our different initiatives. And one of this is the sustainability project of our online shop. Since we want to advocate uh, Pride Merch, made by queer for queer since we are too tired of uh rainbow capitalism we want to promote products mainly from the community mm -hmm. the funding was used for the sustainability project for our community initiatives such as safe space sticker queer mental health subsidy and empower program which promotes social economic empowerment for queer people so we have a lot of community initiatives. And since we uh, just started our nonprofit organization last October 2021, 20, we created a pilot test for those community initiatives. Yeah, and the funding also covers some overhead rates yes. for, the, for the staff. It definitely had an impact on the uh, LGBTQIA plus community in general. The pandemic has taken a lot from us and that includes being able to celebrate two years of Pride March, the 2020 and 2021. So our last physical Pride March was in 2019. It was attended by around 70,000 people. And the one prior to that in 2018 was attended by 25,000 people. And so uh, as to its as the as to the impact of the pandemic on the community, well, a lot of us uh, were pushed back into our closets because we had to go back to our uh the houses of our parents, for example. Mm -hmm. And since a lot of us weren't out, uh, we weren't accepted by our families, so a lot of us were left in unsafe spaces. And so as to the mood of the LGBT community now, we're very excited. Actually, this year. Here in the Philippines, we're going to have two simultaneous Pride March in Metro Manila. In Metro Manila, so one's going to take place in Pasay, Pasay City. It's a big city in the south of Metro Manila, and one's in Quezon City. So you can see how excited the community is. We're organizing two big events as compared to the previous ones, and hopefully in the future we'll be able to have uh, Pride events 
all over the country, not just in Metro Manila. So, of course, there are queers everywhere. Yes. So, but this is a good start, seeing how we're organizing two different events to cater to a bigger audience and to have uh, to increase the visibility of the community. So, uh, the community is very excited. We've been waiting for this for two years. And so, uh, uh, you can expect it's going to be very colorful. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, well, I suppose to answer that, we should first talk about how do we measure like progress in relation to rights. So I would say it, it we can quantify it by looking at the legislation. And yes, you're correct. There, there is a an anti discrimination bill in our progress uh, in our Congress, and it's actually been sitting there for more than two decades. Right? It it never uh, made it past to the third reading. So as to the progress in relation to legislation, there were a lot of anti-discrimination ordinances that were passed in the previous years in big cities, including Manila, the capital of our country, um, in Quezon City, Pasig City, even in Iloilo City, they amended their uh, ordinance to include SOGI-based discrimination. So there are these small progresses in terms of legislation uh, that their uh, local ordinances but as to a national law, there is still no um, a national law against anti-discrimination is still wanting to be passed here in the Philippines. And um, uh, as to other legislation, that would include civil unions, I suppose. Th there was actually a bill on uh, domestic partnerships, but it's also not passed in our Congress. So, yeah, there are smaller movements. If we were to measure the progress of... Um, equal rights. The civil society, there are a lot of LGBT organizations that are lobbying for these. So you can see the smaller movements, uh, which is evidenced by having these ordinances, these local ordinances, these ADOs. But as to a national bill or a national law, yeah, we're still waiting for that to happen. And we're very hopeful in the future, the future administration, that these bills will be passed. Religion has a very important role. <laughs> in uh, relation to that. So um, here in the Philippines, no, we're still uh, uh, a bit confused in how we can separate the state and the church because uh, the influence of the church is very powerful. That's why a lot of our uh, politicians are well not supportive of the SOGI equality bill. It's what we call the anti-discrimination bill because um, a lot of uh, conservatives think it, it's anti-religion. So as to how we can connect with Sorry, what's the question? To the rest of society. Well, we can look at it from an intersectional framework because there's no um there's no single issue struggle. So when we say uh we represent the LGBTQIA plus community or we fight for the community, we need to take note that this is not just a single issue because uh, we have brothers and sisters from the community that are coming from, example, from more conservative areas in the country. We have Muslim brothers and sisters from the community. We have uh, um brothers and sisters from the community who are workers, employees, right? So uh, all these struggles, they're connected. So when we fight for the LGB LGBT uh, community, we're fighting for all these struggles. We need to take into account that our community is diverse, right? And um, a win for one struggle is a win for all these struggles. So within our community, we have, we are very diverse. Like, oh, we have allies. We have queer people, and one of the few stories that are very, uh, what do you call this, heartwarming is queer people uh, have seen their life partners within the community, within our Facebook group. Uh, for example, there's one queer individual who is working in Canada. Mm -hmm. she recently went back home here in the Philippines and she met her life partner within our community Facebook group then for the first time they met mm -hmm. after two years of being in an LDR relationship so uh, they met within our mm -hmm. Facebook group yeah, a lot, there's a lot of couples yes. who met through our Facebook group. So more, than, spaces. more than 50 couples, 50 yeah. or more. I mean, we can't, yes. we don't really have a number for... I made a poll last You yes. counted them? Wow. <laughs> so, so there are community members who also found their 
support system. Mm-hmm. They're solid friends. Yes, solid friends. That it's not just within the internet space. Mm-hmm. They are also uh, meeting in real life. So uh, before pandemic, we usually hang out. We uh, Tina and I also joining them. Mm-hmm. The, them. Yes. And right now, some of them are living together as friends. Mm-hmm. So as housemates, mm-hmm. since in the LGBT community, you choose your own family. Yeah. So there's there's actually an anecdote of one of our members who said uh, she's actually based abroad and then she came back here in the Philippines uh, just recently. And then um, her family was asking her, like, who are these people that you're meeting with? We don't remember you having friends. <laughs> like, it, it's a painful thing to ask your child, but that's uh, what they asked her. And then um, she, well, she did not say who these people are, but uh, it just shows the bond, the friendship that is uh, formed through the through this Facebook group. No? Now they find a, so, a solid support system, the family that they chose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from a uh, personal standpoint, no, it's for the community in general. Of course, Rowan and I, we've, we've been together for five years, so we're already uh, starting to plan for a future together, how we're going to have a family. But here in the Philippines, uh, it seems that we have very limited options because there's no civil union law here. Right? Um, under the laws, we are strangers. Um, this is the reality for a lot of LGBT couples that have been together for more than 10 years. But under the law, you're still strangers under our Philippine laws. So our hope is that, well, as you mentioned earlier, the anti-discrimination bill to be passed, like in terms of legislation, we want to be able to live a life that's free from fear of discrimination or violence. It's it's the bare minimum, but it's still something that we're fighting for to this day here in the country. And well, another is like what I said earlier, the civil union laws, because we want to be able to start a family together and we want to be able to access the same rights that heterosexual or straight couples are able to enjoy because we're also Filipinos. We're also, uh, we also have the same uh, constitu- constitutionally guaranteed rights and yet we're not able to, to access them because um, the law does not recognize our type of relationship. So um, in terms of, um, I suppose, cultural, on a cultural level, acceptance. Right? We, we want a society where we don't even have to come out anymore. Yes. And do you want to weigh on that? Yes, <laughs> because here in the Philippines, you are just tolerated but not fully accepted. So we envision a society that uh, we are free and we don't have to come out anymore. Mm. Like it's very normal. Mm. Uh, maybe uh, the mental health service subsidy project that we are officially launching since uh last few months it was just a pilot test and uh hopefully this pride month we were able to uh launch it it's called telequeer that will offer the psychosocial services for queer people here in the philippines or beneficiaries 